You'll be amazed when you watch it. Some will, but not enough. We're back. We were just talking about nerves. This interests me. It happens over and over that someone you've seen dazzling on the screen, presumably able to play anything, <clears throat> comes here and feels a, a terrible nervousness that, that, that's hard, very hard to explain. Uh, is it, could you play a calm person at a time when you're terrified? You know what I'm saying? I mean, can you, suppose you, you uh, are, are very worried about doing an interview, so you decide to act calm, even though you're nervous. Do you then get that wonderful control over yourself that the actor gets when he plays a role, or doesn't that work? Or am I talking about anything? I think you're watching it now, actually. You know what I mean? Uh, just... Act yeah. calm, yes. Well, I mean, yeah. I, uh, it, certainly I can hide behind a, a very good script writer and a very good play and a very good yeah. character who is calm. But now I'm currently being the character uh, and the script writer, uh, which isn't all that easy. No. no. You were an altar boy once. I find that odd. <laughs> uh, well, I don't actually know what an altar boy does or, or did, but... Uh, Prompts nervous priests. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> if he gets into the wrong, um, the wrong yeah. ceremony or whatever... Or whatever yeah, I, yes, I, I can recall um, a very close friend of mine who is a priest. Uh, uh, and I'd forgotten to bring the bell at the raising of the host, which is the holiest part of the, mm. of the, of the Catholic mass. And uh, as he, he raised the, the host, the sanctus, 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 there was no bell to ring, and you have to ring it three times. So I went ting-a-ling-a-ling. <laughs> Oh, it's right. That's a good. I, I thought it was actually it's an extreme initiative. <laughs> if you're going to go something, I guess ting a ling a ling is the best thing the, to say. The holiest part of the transubstantiation, <laughs> I could see a priest with his shoulders shaking. He, he was amused. Oh, indeed, That's yeah. lucky. The wrong priest, you could have been ejected <laughs> yeah, yeah, from yeah. the from the church for that, I suppose. What would you call a film if you had to put it? Somebody says, say, what's this new film you've done? Is it comic, tragic, pastoral? Yeah, yeah. What a Polonius, historical. Yeah. Well, well, I am. Um, I've been asked, obviously, many times. Yeah. What I, uh, uh, I'm sure I had a very good reason when I, I did it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, uh, what can I say? The, f the thing that that made me want to do it first mm -hmm. was I was uh, lying in bed reading it, yeah. and I kept on falling out of bed laughing. Uh, it's an hilarious script. And I've seen audiences falling about, not out of bed, we don't, we don't supply beds, but uh, <laughs> laughing. And then I, I read a little more, and uh, I was deeply disturbed. Deeply disturbed. Uh, unquiet. And I, I read back to say, did I really see that? And indeed I did, and then I read on, and before I could get into my role of being deeply disturbed, suddenly I fell out of bed again. I, I was laughing again. Um, and I did this classical error of trying to categorize it. Mm -hmm. And I out Polonius to Polonius. I, uh, tragical, comical, historical, philosophical, farcical, epistemological, and I did seven cerebral somersaults, and wound up on my metaphorical ass, and uh, <laughs> it, uh, it, it, uh, well, it is a, what, what it, it's a, I've said, a, 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 a comedy with tragic relief. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. And it does not do what it's told. It simply does not do what it's told. Mm -hmm. And I find increasingly that we, forgive me if I include you, ladies and gentlemen, we are increasingly told what to do, uh, how to behave. Um, we have an etiquette of what to feel given certain situations. Um, we're becoming uh, uh, squashed. There's a, a, an aeroplane firm which uh, advertises itself as the earth shrinker. Mm -hmm. 
Priestley, J.B. Priestley, loathes the word shrinker, shrink, shrink, shrink. We're being shrunken, we're made to conform. Uh, we're having the sap, the living, quick, crushed out of us. And uh, ruling class, in fact, and uh, as in life, it's reflected, I think, in cinema and theater as well. Um, uh, if you make a comedy, it has to be a small little comedy and be funny. If you make an epic, it has to be long, involving a cast of thousands. Uh, if you make uh, an experimental film, uh, it, it has to cost very little, with some poor, some poor sod with a handheld camera and two people who are paid nothing. If it has to be a musical, uh, everything grinds to a halt while someone stands up and, and, and grinds out a number. Uh, well, as my friend James Coco, do you know James Coco? Yeah. Uh, who is from the Bronx would say, what is all this? Uh, do the lot. And in, in fact, uh, in ruling class, um, what am I talking about? It, it, I, 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 I just can't bored with, with, with small, tiny, explicit things that explain us. I want scale, I want imagination, I want mystery, and above all, I want humor. And this is what attracted me to the ruling class. It, hey, and you'll get all that from me. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very well said. I, I can see that. It, you just, you have to see the film to understand it. There's no, I mean, to get any idea. I've never seen a film quite like it. I've never seen anybody play madness on the screen as thoroughly and completely and chillingly as you do in some parts of this film. Um, so convincingly that um, I don't quite know how to compliment you on it. <laughs> Talking with Peter O'Toole. Uh, we were talking about madness earlier. Is there any way you can study it as an actor? Or do you just hope that you bring out the inherent madness in all of us, or, or neither of the above? Yes, well, I have a reputation uh, uh, in my family of, of being potty. Uh, potty? Um, potty, mad, I suppose. Oh, I, yeah, um, that's American for lavatory. Is, is it really? <laughs> Back to where we were at the beginning. But, uh, yeah. Well, well, I have a reputation for being a bathroom, and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's clear now. Uh, uh, to define true madness, what is it but truly mad? Hamlet, boring play. Uh, uh, what, what, what? Hamlet, boring? <laughs> Ma about a madman. Uh, uh, I think it is a cliché, and it's the handiest of old clichés, but uh, I don't mind clichés if they're true. I think that, as we saw in that little clip in from uh, the ruling class, mm -hmm. if Jesus Christ walked into New York today, he would be considered mad. And uh, I think that some of our great uh, people who have advanced science, advanced culture, advanced all manner of things have been considered mad. Uh, uh, and. In a world which is precariously sane, for instance, the, the psychiatrist who has become the new priest, the new oracle, yes? Okay. Would you agree with that? I don't know what you're going to say yet. But the oh, priest that, is the new... Uh, the psychiatrist being the... The new priest. Sure, sure. Well, well I've met a there. number of psychiatrists, and I think they need psychiatrists. Uh, Some of them have them. Is that a fact? Some are in treatment. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, um, uh, what is the point? Uh, we're all saying, everyone's saying, I read the newspaper, that the world, our society is so awful. And one of the themes of the ruling class, one of the many themes of the ruling class, is that um, a man is taken, who is unorthodox, mad if you like, who knows he's Jesus Christ, and um, is made normal. Now, the society which produces um, psychiatrists, which produces the drugs, the tranquilizers, whatever, which are all invaluable for the sick mind, and they will make a man normal to return him to a society which made him ill in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's right, it's catch-22 in a way. Indeed. Or something. It's a complete, complete circle. Total power. Putting him back in the jungle that he supposedly which made him escaped so into his mind from. To normalize him, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Somebody, uh, there was, a, I think it's Santa Ana, there's a definition of madness, that it's not to go out of your mind, but he said, but to go thoroughly in your mind. Yeah. And that makes sense. Uh, you retreat this way instead of running away that way. Uh, and I can also, understand madness that. is treated so differently. In, uh, where I'm from, in, in rural Ireland, we have many people who are not quite normal, and they're not shut away, they're not excluded, they're not outlawed, they're not leopard. Um, they're part of the community, uh, uh, and they, they provide, and forgive me if this sounds callous, some amusement. They also provide a great deal of wisdom, they're protected, they live in the home, and there could be a case, uh, that you could argue a case, that to be, uh, to be slightly nutty is in fact desirable. <laughs> well, I'm arguing a case anyway. <laughs> At first, I thought you were going to say there was madness in your family for some reason. When you started to say, I, I'm known to be a bit, or my family is known to be a bit. Uh, well, uh, but, uh, we do things which are not considered uh, normal. <laughs> well, fainting on a talk show to me is perfectly normal. <laughs> yes, I, indeed. I, I've, I've thought of doing it myself. No, I was thinking because... more of hitting English policemen and, 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 and <laughs> things like that. What's odd about that? <laughs> yes, you have had a few Ask of those, an English those, yeah. those yeah. Uh, yeah. incidents. Uh, I thought it was Italian photographers that you struck more frequently. Uh, there seemed to be some, wasn't there some incident once where you decked a photographer, who was one of those paparazzi who was following you around popping films? Well, I joined the, the, the long, long, long club of, of people who've taken a poke at a paparazzi, because they are the most grievous, horrible things. They crowd around you. Yeah. Yeah, yes, and insult you and one thing or another. So is there a penalty for striking them? Th there is indeed, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see why there should be, but no, no, no. it seems strange. There's so, there are some just frightening moments in the film. I don't want to dwell on them because it's embarrassing to ask an actor how he does things exactly, because my theory is that no actor really knows. There's some mystery about it, You're possessed in some way at the time you do it, and that's all there is to say about it. But, um, well, and I guess I should leave it at that. I don't, know how to, I don't know how to talk about it, except it's one of the most interesting things I've ever seen on the screen. Can you still ride a camel? Well, I haven't had the opportunity. Uh, well, we have a little surprise. No, we don't. <laughs> that, that would be repulsive, wouldn't it? But yeah. I, I was told that you removed most of your, um, what do you call it in England, uh, the first time you, you were taught to ride a camel, that a, a great deal of epidermis from one's backside was um, uh, I lost a great deal sacrificed. of skin from my ass, yes. Yes, that's, that's it, exactly. I couldn't think of the English expression for that. Um, 